everybody, I'm Juan Fernandez. And I'm Sharon Tay. We do not want war. Iran's Supreme Leader and the U.S. Secretary of State both made those announcements today. Well, after a week of threats from both sides and a naval buildup in the Middle East, both sides may be signaling they want to ratchet things down tonight or maybe not. Mm -hmm. KKL 9 political reporter Dave Bryan has the late details on this potential showdown in the Gulf, Dave. Yeah, it's not clear right now which way it's going to go, but there's plenty of tension about it. The U.S. may be saying it doesn't want war with Iran, but it's not stopping the Trump administration from planning for possible military action. The New York Times reporting the Pentagon's drawing up war plans against Iran, which it charges is threatening American troops and interests in the Persian Gulf region. That updated military plan that could include sending more than 100,000 American troops to the Middle East if necessary. After inspecting the damage done to four tankers anchored just outside the Persian Gulf, U.S. officials say it's highly likely Iran's hardline Revolutionary Guards are responsible for the acts. They believe Iranian frogmen attached explosives to the hull of a Norwegian tanker. The U.S. has threatened to retaliate against Iran for any attack on America or its interests in the Persian Gulf. Now, the New York Times reports the Trump administration is reviewing plans for sending as many as 120,000 more U.S. troops to the Middle East if Iran attacks American forces first or accelerates work on nuclear weapons, according to unnamed administration officials. But they do not call for a land invasion of Iran. President Trump dismissed the Times report, then seemed to verify it. I think it's fake news, okay? Now, would I do that? Absolutely. But we have not planned for that. Hopefully, we're not going to have to plan for that. And if we did that, we'd send a hell of a lot more troops than that. USC professor Mohammed Sahimi was a political columnist for the Tehran Bureau of PBS Frontline. He says the suggestions of sending 120,000 U.S. troops to the region is dramatically increasing the chances for a war. This is a very dangerous situation, precisely because both sides uh, have increased their rhetoric and both sides have started talking uh, about war. We are dealing with a very volatile situation. The Pentagon has already repositioned an aircraft carrier and a bomber group in the Middle East. But Iran accuses President Trump of moving the two countries toward war, which the U.S. denies. If there is miscalculation, it will be on the part of the Iranian regime. We've made it very clear that we will deter, we are trying to deter, the threat of Iranian acts. Professor Sahimi says he believes the Trump administration may be miscalculating the Iranian leadership and the Iranian people in an effort to show his base what a tough guy he is. It is the Trump administration that has been uh, after uh, putting maximum pressure on, on Iran, hoping that Iranian people will rise up and overthrow the Iranian regime, but that will not happen. The only thing that will happen is that it will leave a lasting impression of animosity uh, on the Iranian people towards the United States. And these are the people who are generally pro-U.S. But President Trump may have a tough time convincing the European allies to join the attack on Iran. A senior British military official told Pentagon reporters Tuesday that he sees absolutely no increased risk from Iran or allied militias in Iraq or Syria. And the New York Times reporting that many intelligence and military officials, both in Europe and even in the United States, now say that the more aggressive moves are not coming from Iran, but rather from the United mm -hmm. States. Sharon, back to you. All right.